black people, when you see a white person in a beauty supply store, what goes through your mind? Oh, so fabulous. <laughs> hi guys welcome back to the channel once again it's your girl Dumebilia. if this is your first time coming across my channel you're welcome i do hope you decide to subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber you guys know that i love you it's so good to have you here welcome back so my usual disclaimer this video is strictly for educational purposes please do not go searching out the people that i talk about in this video don't send them any form of hate hate comment threats or violence this channel does not support any of that so today's video was a video that i came across that was made by a black man who you guys probably know on this channel if you watch my videos regularly where he was teaching a video made by a black woman that was basically talking about how she saw a palm colored girl or palm colored woman in the beauty supply store and she was like eyeing the palm colored woman and all of that now the funny thing about this video is he made several videos like this of different black women that were basically saying something like that in their videos about you know running into palm colored women in the beauty supply stores right and then another thing that i observed is that there was another black man who usually kind of shares similar kind of opinions on his own tiktok as well so both of them were reacting to these videos made by these black women so it was giving me some form of collaboration tag team you know effect because they were both reacting to the same type of videos made by these black women and basically making the same point in their videos so i'm just going to go right ahead and play the videos made by this man side eye side eye why i said this once and i'll say it again imagine if a white girl was in lululemon and she saw a black girl and she was like this is why i look at black girls when they're in lululemon you guys would literally lose your minds you would be trying to figure out who said that and you guys would go try to ruin their life and you guys have heard me say this before but when i say black privilege these are the type of things i'm talking about white people could not get away with saying stuff like this society would end them but for some reason we let black people say it and just act like it's okay and I mean, what's the point? If white girls want to go in there and buy something, who cares? If white people don't interact with black culture, then a lot of them are considered racist and not inclusive. If they do, then they consider it cultural appropriation. If you're a white person, how do you win? When are you not doing something wrong? I'm not even white and I'm tired of it. The whole point is, is if we were to flip the races and then it would not seem okay, it's probably not okay. And the reality is, is America holds white people to the standard that they do not hold black people to. That's the reality. All right, let's flip the script again. Imagine a white girl was in Lululemon and posted the same thing saying, you know, something about black girls in Lululemon does not sit right with me. The internet and a bunch of you guys would absolutely lose your minds. And then a bunch of you would even go on and try to cancel her and ruin this girl's life. But a black girl can say something like this and we just, oh, okay, whatever. Again, this is another example of black privilege. You know, I don't understand how you can win as a white person in today's society. I really don't. Because if you don't partake in black culture, well then you're not accepting of cultures and you're racist. But if you do partake in black culture, then it's cultural appropriation and you're stealing stuff from black people. So then if you see that and you don't partake in anything because you're worried about that, well, you're also a racist. Because again, you're not inclusive. So it seems like all roads lead back to racism. And white supremacy, I forgot. Let's not forget, if you move out of an area, it's white flight. If you move in, it's what? Gentrification. I really, I mean, I don't see how you win. And today, I really don't. That has got to be annoying. It doesn't make sense to me. Why do white people bother y'all so bad? Could you imagine if a white person literally made the exact same video? I mean, think about it. There's no way that that person would be existing normally right now. They would be on front page news because they would be labeled racist. They would be finding their job, they would be finding their school, they would be finding their family, contacting their mama, cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. All because a white person said, oh, a black person doing this doesn't sit right with me. What is wrong with y'all? Can you just let people exist? Having this much problem with white people is racist. Having that thought process about white people when you walk inside of a store, it doesn't matter what kind of store it is, is racist. Like seriously though, could you imagine if a white woman said literally those words? I have a problem with seeing a black woman in this store. I can literally see in detail what would happen to this woman. 
Bro, no, 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 no. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm on this app. Because I can guarantee that stuff like this will happen and nobody will talk about it. That is racist. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Okay, well take those AirPods out of your ears because that company was started by a white man. Or white men. And this is a perfect example of black privilege. Imagine a white girl said, anytime I see a black girl in Lululemon, I think about how we need to bring segregation back. <laughs> Many of your heads would be spinning so fast that you wouldn't even be able to see straight. You guys would be trying to cancel this individual, ruin their life, destroy everything for this person. But a black girl says it and uh, we're all like, oh, okay. And the, and the issue is that she feels so comfortable that she can say it. This is what I mean by black privilege. And the smugness with which she posted this video is interesting. We are way past segregation and still people talk about this. Again, this video is gross, but it's so clear that there's a double standard. And this is what I mean by black people have black privilege and we're treated with kid gloves due to what happened to us in the past. We can just say and do whatever and people just say, oh, okay. And we as black people are like, oh yeah, that's cool. Do your thing. That's not cool. If a white girl says something like that, again, we would be trying to destroy her. We'd want her canceled. We'd talk about how she's wrong, how she's terrible, how she's racist, how she's a bigot. But again, a black person says it, and there are black girls in the comments like, yeah, girl, yeah, 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 black people, yeah, yeah. Oh, get out of my face with that. It's stupid. We 100% need to be better than this because this is sad. I don't think she knows where that sound came from, <laughs> but this is a problem. Why can't y'all just allow white people to just exist? Last time I checked, beauty supply stores are for all women. Last time I checked, all women are beautiful. So why are you trying to gatekeep a beauty supply store from white women? This white hate is just ridiculous. I truly don't understand it. I grew up with all different types of races. I've never had a hatred for one specific race like this. And they truly say that black people aren't racist. And they will fight you tooth and nail to say that they aren't. But this right here is literal racism. Calling for segregation. Little does she know that a white man even made that sound. <laughs> I, I truly hope things change. I, I really do. Because I literally love all people. And I hate seeing videos like this, man. This shit is just getting way too toxic, man. Girl, hey, I don't know if you know this, but um, beauty supply stores are for black people. Yeah, the whiteies, y'all go to Sally's. What happened to women supporting women? Oh, that's right. Only if they're not white. I mean, for one, imagine a white woman going on here and saying those words. This store is for white people only. And then proceeds to direct you to another store. Black people like this are ruining this country. Ruining all the progress that it took to make sure that everybody gets along. Everybody can coexist together. Beauty supply stores are not just for black women. They're not just for black people. They are for everybody. And most of these beauty supply stores are owned by Asian people. They don't give a f who spends money in their store. And how dare you direct white people to Sally's as if they don't carry black products. This is the type of shit that makes me sick because these same women go on my page and tell me derogatory shit and tell me that I'm holding the black community back while saying shit like this. You're being racist. What's worse, me calling out the black community for doing bad shit like this or you being blatantly racist? This is ridiculous. I cannot imagine a white person doing any of these things that we've covered in the last couple of weeks on video, posting it proud. Ugh. So yeah, you guys, if you watch this channel, you definitely recognize those guys and you're probably not surprised with what they had to say. So of course, as you'd expect in their comment section, you could see a lot of palm color people agreeing with them and also like bashing the black women for making such videos, talking about how, why can't we all just be one? What is the big deal if we want to go to the beauty supply store and shop? Why do we have to segregate and this and that? So basically you could see a lot of those comments and some people went as far as making their own videos as well in response, some in agreement, some in disagreement. I'm just going to go right ahead and play the stitches right now. Imagine a white girl said, anytime I see a black girl in Lululemon, I think about how we need to bring segregation back. Let me take these off so you can see me. So you thought you ate, but you really didn't. Um, at the end of the day, I think the compare and contrast and the reason why this black woman was able to make this video is because the difference between her wearing Lululemon and a white woman wearing, uh, going to the beauty supply store and buying up everything and then telling somebody she discovered a secret place to get goodies. 
is that uh, when black women wear Lululemon, they're not going to inflate the prices because Lululemon's already expensive. But let Susie Q from down the block find out about the beauty supply store. And she tells all her friends about it online. And all of a sudden, instead of getting 99 cent lip gloss and $2 tweezers, we're paying inflated prices because everything's popular. But I think you knew that. You just wanted to come for us. Hang it up. This is my part two of race isn't okay. I'm getting the feeling that I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying black people and saying that it's majority of black people that do this. Um, Because that's all I've seen. <laughs> I've never seen a white woman go into a store and pick out the first black person that she sees and starts recording them creepily from probably three feet behind them, probably breathing down their neck. <gasps> There's a white person in the store. No, I ain't never seen that shit before. I've never seen a white person do that shit. I've seen white people act crazy as fuck to black people. And that's valid. Record that shit. Make that person look dumb. That lady, this chick was minding her fucking business. Like, and we're just gonna be okay with the racist? Like I've I've I'm no, I've noticed that it is okay when darker complexions, when black people decide that they're gonna be racist. It's just okay, right? Racism to me will never be okay. I grew up loving my black people, even after I was treated shittily by them. I grew up still having love in my heart for these people, for everybody because it's not your skin color, it's not your hair, it's not the way you dress, it's not the way you walk, it's your personality and who you are on the inside that matters to me. And that woman showed her insides like this. She just mm, spread it open. Nah, f you and fuck racism. If you like that shit, get the f off my page. Blue Lemon, she saw a black girl and she was like, this is why I look at black girls. I just compared the beauty supply store to Lululemon. You know what it is? It's the lack of shame. You came on the internet unprovoked to make a complete fool of yourself. Watch how easy this is going to be to show you how stupid you sound. I'm done being nice about it. I've made way too many videos trying to really break this down and show the research and y'all don't give a fuck. I'm going to make you look stupid. Number one, generally speaking, white people have no business being in the beauty supply store because they can get what they need for their hair, for their body, for their care anywhere. However, for black people, for our hairstyles, our hair texture not finding that at walmart beauty supply store is quite literally the only place the only place we can go to find what we need the only reason why people want to be there is because they don't like being excluded from shit similar to that feeling of entitlement tied to white people wanting to say the n-word so badly mainly because we tell them they're not allowed to so it feels like they're being excluded from this exclusive club when they're used to being allowed into every single club everywhere all the time you're walking up to the club door right and you're like showing your id and they're like no sorry can't enter and they're like <laughs> Do you know who my daddy is? We're gonna hear from my lawyers about this. That's what it's giving. The beauty supply store was created by us for us because we were not being served elsewhere. We were being excluded intentionally by white society because white supremacy this shouldn't be new information for any of you. Number two, he talks about cultural appropriation. Y'all always bring this up as it pertains to hair. Talking about it's just hair, knowing goddamn well it's not just hair. Because if it was just hair, something like the Crown Act wouldn't have to exist. If you don't even know what that is, you should not have any opinion in this conversation. The difference between a white girl going to the beauty supply store and getting braids in their hair versus a black girl doing it is that white girl will not get denied that job for having that hairstyle whereas the black girl very much will that's a basic example i could give you hundreds of others white people get to try on different bits and pieces from cultures with no repercussion just for fun just for the trend just because they think it looks cute for us it is so much deeper than that there is so much history there's so much culture there's so much pain there's so much love there's so much joy in our hair it has never been just hair and y'all know it y'all just say that out of sheer ignorance with the age of social media and how easy it is to learn new things being ignorant is no longer an excuse these type of black men we've seen it way too many times it's so obvious old it's played out you will get the likes that's the thing black men you will get the likes and the views from saying bullshit like that mainly from and if you have mainly agreeing with you might want to reconsider your views I get where the internalized race 
from comes from i get where that internalized hatred comes from i get why you would want to pander to the white man i get it i get it i get it but baby it's not getting you nowhere they will never accept you they will use you as a scapegoat they will use you as a talking point and then discard you you've seen it time and time again baby wake up <laughs> Let's talk about this for a quick minute because, listen, if this wasn't the definition of chronically online, I don't know what is. Like, people behind a phone and behind a keyboard always have the most to say, but literally will never say that shit to your face. And this is just the cold hard proof of that. That girl was standing right there in front of you and you were like, mm, you know what, I'm going to like try to really slyly take a video and then I'm going to post this video and I'm going to shit talk her on the internet. Why didn't you just say what you needed to say or wanted to say to her face rather than post a video about her on the internet? Oh, that's right, because it's all for fucking show. It's all for attention, it's all for clicks, it's all for views, it's all for likes. Because you don't actually have the balls to say anything to her. Y'all gotta take some time to get the fuck off the internet is what y'all need to do. And listen, if it's not something you're gonna say to somebody in real life, you probably shouldn't post it online either. Now leave this poor girl alone while she gets the shit she needs to make herself feel beautiful. And mind your damn business. So this is someone else's video because she turned the duets and the stitches off, which shocker, right? Um, but I just, I think she was tr trying to go for an attempt at like edgy comedy, but it missed the mark and it just ended up being tacky and distasteful. In my opinion, I find it distasteful because recently I've been hearing the sentiment from a lot of African-American people, especially on TikTok, where they're saying things like, um, Things were better before integration for black people. Um, I even heard one guy, the guy on the street corner, um, he was a Hebrew Israelite or something, he was saying that um, integration was the worst thing to happen to black people, which is weird because it's like you, you weren't alive and you definitely weren't there during segregation. And it seems to me as if things weren't that great during segregation because there was a whole civil rights movement and like our grandparents got sprayed by fire hoses and cracked on the head with billy clubs and attacked by police dogs. So it seems like they were um, trying to, they definitely wanted integration. So in my opinion, that's just a, like a dumb sentiment from a privileged perspective of somebody who has all the um, equal rights of an American citizen, but is saying that things were better when people when people didn't have all the equal rights of American citizens. And then also the beauty supply store thing. This is the second video I've seen where somebody is complaining about seeing a white woman in a beauty supply store. But if you, like I did, if you grew up in a predominantly white area, you can't find salons that even carry black hair products or know how to do black hair, and it's very irritating. So to me, I'm assuming that if I see um, a white woman in a, in a black beauty supply store that she's probably a hairdresser, or maybe that she has um, an adopted black child or maybe biracial children. And those women also, um, women who have adopted black children or biracial children, if they don't do their hair properly, they get like dragged mercilessly. So for me, if I see that person in a beauty supply store, I'm like, oh, good, great. You know, she's probably um, using the products she's buying to do somebody's hair. So I just I make it make sense, to be honest. I just don't get it. I think that's really sad that that chick feels that way that she looks at her skin color and determines that she shouldn't be in that store. I'm a hairstylist. So I've had every single kind of hair you can think of. I've had it sewn in, I've had it beaded in, I've had it glued in, I've had it taped in. Um, I've had everything you can think of because as a hairstylist, I want to experience and feel every single thing that I do with my clients. And plus, I have a tendency to cut my hair, and I hate it when I do that, and then I get extensions. And where do I go? To the hair store. And yeah, people give me a side eye, but guess what? I know where everything is, and I know exactly what I'm looking at. So this girl needs to check herself. For real. Because that girl could be a licensed hairstylist. You don't know. Side eye! Why? I said this- Uh, sir, I need you to understand something. Yes, we do feel uncomfortable with white people entering black spaces, and let me tell you why. Everything that black people build, 
was destroyed by white people and if white people don't even want to admit it they feel uncomfortable with black people entering their white spaces their white safe spaces it, and in his videos he was talking about oh if the roles were reversed if the roles were reversed the roles have been reversed we've been through this we all went through history classes the roles have been reversed so i'm not understanding where that's even coming from and another thing is is that there's nothing in the beauty supply store that a white person could possibly need and i'm not talking about a white person with curly or curly hair i'm talking about a white person with bone straight hair there's nothing that they could possibly need and obviously you didn't know that it wasn't that long ago that black people couldn't even go into a regular store and get their hair care products so please stop talking about this did she say it was against the law for you to go into the beauty supply store i've said it before but i'll say it again i have never heard a black person say non-black people can't do this specific thing i have only ever heard black people try and stop white people from looking foolish or being disrespectful be so serious, Lauren. What do you need from here? You said if I'm gonna quote you, quote you right. You said, I like positivity. What in God's name makes you think it is anything except positive for a black woman to take time out of her day to educate you on history and context behind beauty supply stores? Please be serious. The only reason you feel like it's not positive is because you are getting the message that maybe you might not be welcome in a space where nothing is for you. Maybe if white people didn't have a history of oppressing others, this would not be a problem. Like three weeks out of my life, I worked at Malta Beauty. I saw the way that the security followed black people around the store versus white people. Is it illegal for them to be in that store? No. Are they experiencing discrimination that could actually be harmful to their well-being? Yes. This is tone deaf as f No. I, I don't like the joke because it's in poor taste, but ultimately, it's a joke nonetheless, and it is total, toting the lion comedy. Uh, this kind of comedy style is necessary for society because it takes the pressure off of society. But yes, certain people can make certain jokes. This is not just a black and white thing. This is just across the spectrum. Jewish people can make jokes in reference to the Holocaust or to their Jewish identity, but other people can't, okay? Black people can make jokes to their oppression in society. Other people can't, okay? Uh, Andrew Schultz is a perfect example of this type of comedy where he totes that line of what is racist and not racist, what is oppressive and not oppressive as a white man of Jewish ancestry. She, he can make certain jokes and be accepted in a way that other communities would not be accepted. You know, uh, we can make certain jokes to a certain extent, but certain things are taboo to joke about. Like white people joking about oppressing black people. It's not funny for black people. But everybody can laugh about something like this, like reinstituting segregation to keep your, your things separate or something like that. Those are jokes that can tote the line. Her joke was in poor taste because I don't really care for it. Um, but yeah, I see the point of the joke. But it's still toting the line comedy. It's not just black people that do this, though. Uh, um, you also see this with Middle Easterners. They can joke about being assumed to be a terrorist. We, as individuals who are not Muslim or not Middle Eastern, cannot joke about those things. Because we are not of that community, and we would be considered a position of power in the situation. When you are not a part of that community, you cannot make jokes about that community. Much like people who are gay... Or, uh, or lesbian can use the term the F term to refer to one another but we cannot because we are heterosexual or not gay or lesbian you feel me or these are references that they can use but when used from other people even in a joking manner it's seen as oppressive right yes white people cannot make a segregate segregation joke well, they can. It just has to tote that line of comedy. And once they cross that line, then it becomes a problem, okay? There are ways to skirt around jokes, uh, make them acceptable for other communities to use. You just have to be, you, you have to know how to word things. And Andrew Schultz is one of my favorite comedians at this time. And he does this perfectly as a white man. He makes jokes all the time that black people accept and love and find hilarious. I think there's only been a couple times where he messed up. Why? I'm so glad you asked why. Allow me to tell you. So, number one, the beauty supply is the last place in the world that the grillies go judge you. Like, the grillies know. You, if you know, you know. You come to the beauty supply, braids, bonnet, fro, silk, whatever, wig. How you come is how you come. So, with that being said, it's very clear that the beauty supply is a safe space for black women in the black community 
we have had to curate our own black spaces in our own communities because baby white people was not making that for us white people have sally's beauty and like not even being funny but sally's beauty ain't got nathan for me baby ain't nothing in there for my wigs my fro my locks my there's nothing in there for me baby it's for respectfully you know so with all that being the case yeah i'm sure you know people was side-eyeing becky but the reality of the situation is i'm sure someone helped her and was like hey yo sis you looking for 613 or 1b let me know i got you so now we get into the good vice versa situation that our friend was just talking about you know that and uh, the black privilege and all that good jazz let's talk about that now so now let's say these situations are switched you know you know those situations happen where a black person walks into target instead of walmart because they want to be a little bourgeois and security follows them nobody else just a black person in the store that's my black privilege right or how about when i want to get that you know that waist snatching lululemon jacket that the girlies be in it how about when i go to lululemon and buy that and the white women you know clutch their bags and make sure to watch me as i walk through the store is that my black privilege it is right but you know i'm gonna go digress because the uncle ruckuses of the world will tell me i'm talking too much about something that don't matter i just want y'all to see how loud the hate is when it's directed at black women and how quiet it is when it's anyone else being a problem in the world so you know maybe maybe let's protect black women maybe let's protect black spaces maybe let's talk a little louder about that but y'all be easy stay black so you guys have heard what a lot of people said a lot of palm color people you know are not happy about that video and of course i went to the comment section so i got commentary from a lot of palm color people that talk about how whenever they go to the beauty supply store you know they get stares some said that the staff are rude to them some say they don't really experience any negative energy or response they just go there and get what they need to get and leave while well, some say they are really scared, they don't want to go there because they don't know how people are going to react to them at the beauty supply store and all of that. Then I read in the comment section too, some palm color people talking about how, yeah, I went to the beauty supply store to help someone get something or they have cancer and they needed to get wigs because they were losing their hair. That was why they went to the beauty supply store. And I saw someone who said she actually went there to get a birthday gift for a friend who happens to be black. And just in case anyone who doesn't know, the beauty supply store basically caters to needs of women. You know, beauty needs, hair needs. And the beauty supply store, I believe, was created to cater specifically to black women because other stores that you know carried beauty supplies did not cater to women of darker skin did not cater to black women's hair type like you go into their own store where they sell their beauty products and you can't see things that can work for you as a black woman so because of that you see a lot of things that cater to black women our hair type our skin type in this beauty supply store so i think that is why it is mostly patronized by black women and it is kind of odd to see someone who is not a black woman specifically a palm colored woman there but then on the other hand there are also products that are not specific to a kind of race in the beauty supply store maybe like a lip gloss right some hair ruffles and stuff like that so it's not surprising that a palm colored woman might want to get something in a beauty supply store and i actually feel like a lot of the black women don't really think it's a big deal a lot of them don't really care if a palm colored person is coming to the beauty supply store some of the ladies that made those very videos that those guys, you know, stitched in the beginning that I played of this, my video, were also coming out to express that it was just a joke. They didn't mean it so seriously. People don't need to take it so seriously and all of that. But then on the other hand, I definitely know that there are some of our black women who may not like to see palm colored women in the beauty supply store. They believe it's strictly for black women. It's a part of our culture. It's a safe space for black people. So mm, this brings me to my question. What do you guys really think? Do you think the beauty supply store, which of course was primarily created to cater to the beauty needs of black women, do you think it should be kept like that, like a safe space for black women? Like palm colored women have other stores that cater to their own beauty needs. They do not necessarily have to come to the beauty supply store. Or do you think it's not a big deal and it can be open to everybody? We don't need to get keep that. We don't need to you know restrict them you should just let them be it's not that much of a big deal after all business is business right but i would definitely like to know what you guys think about that then again what do you guys think about the men who made it a point of duty to basically make videos upon videos of this topic because those particular guys 
<sighs> I really don't know. I just want to know your thoughts. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And share my video as well. I always appreciate when you guys do that. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.